Hey, so are you interested in learning how to make slides like these so that your presentations are just a little bit more interesting and dynamic? Well, if you are, stick around because you're about to find out how to make them. All right, so hey everybody, I'm Dr. Craig Ingstrom, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create the parallax slide effect in PowerPoint. It is super easy. You'll be doing it in just a few minutes, I promise you. So let's jump to the PC and get started. All right, so in order to create the parallax slide effect, all you're going to need are some high quality images. You're going to need one image that is going to be your anchor. It's highly recommended you have a image that you have in one location to create more of the effect, but you don't necessarily have to. You can also have this image doing things. You probably want some text, but you don't need it necessarily. In this case, I have Salukis everywhere because my university right now is doing a campaign for the Alumni Association called Salukis Everywhere. This dog is a Saluki. It is the mascot of the university, Southern Illinois University Carbondale, where I work. And uh, yeah, once you have those, it's pretty simple. This is the steps. The first thing is you're going to obtain some high quality pictures. You will want to place the images or pictures on a slide, resize the slide to the slide ratio. It can be 16 by nine, but of course, you can always set up your slides for, if we go to design here, size four by three, that's the old standard version. Of course, you can set up your slides for, for example, 1080 by 1080p, which would be for Instagram. So you can always create Instagram posts right in PowerPoint. A lot of people don't know that. So super easy. Once you have those set up, you're going to follow basically this slide design principle. So if we go to the slide one, go back up to slide one. When I say one to one, I mean, I'm gonna dial out here, I'm hitting control, and then on my mouse key, I'm going to wheel out. So I'm using the mouse wheel, and I'm gonna wheel out to here, and you'll see one to one, full size images. One, one full size and one full size, okay? On the second slide, it says you want to have a 0.5 to 1 to 1. So let's go up here and I can zoom out and I can go 0.5, which is the entire image, but I have it half on and then half off. And then I have the full size image, 1 and 1. Go down to the final image, it's half off and 1. Go back down here for that last image, 0.5 to 1. So that gives you a sense of sort of a principle to kind of keep in mind as you are designing it. Now, uh, because my computer screen is not exactly 16 by 9, I'm going to jump out here just to show you that you can actually zoom in and out without a mouse key. So you can just use the little slider here in case you are not familiar with that. But I'm going to be using my mouse control and the wheel key just to kind of go in and out more quickly. So once you have that sort of the images set up on the slide, you can use copy paste to get things done quickly. I will show you how to do that. You'll apply morph transitions to the slide, and finally, you can add text and other layers at any time, and I will show you how to do that. I just wanted to highlight it. It can be at any time because, let's say, for example, you want to make a change after you apply the morph transition, you can do that. It's not going to cause any problems. So what do we need to do? Let's go ahead and first follow that step of obtain royalty-free pictures. So I'm going to create a new slide here just so we're working from here. and. I need to get a picture of, for example, this dog, this Saluki. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to pexels.com and I'm going to type in Saluki and you can see this is the image that I want. So I'm gonna click on that, I can download. Usually you wanna choose a large size, click download and you can make a donation to the artist. This is free royalty free images, but I highly recommend that you make donations if you can, so that you can support these artists. I always make donations when I use them in videos. Now, I can also just copy from here and place it into the slide. So what I did was a control V. It'll probably give you some design ideas if you have that set up. I'm gonna close that. And what I want to do is remove the background. So I'm gonna to go to format picture and I'm going to click on remove background. Then it's going to give me this little section here. This is all stuff that's going to be removed if it's in the pink and there are areas that I can mark to keep or areas I can mark to remove. So for example, if I want to remove the eyeball, I can click on that, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to mark some areas to keep because as you can see here, we don't want the, just the head. We want the entire body and I can just kind of like draw along sort of all the areas I want to keep. 
And I can just keep doing this until I get what I want. Sometimes it has a hard time recognizing. I can really dial in there. Anyway, once I have what I want to keep, I'm gonna say keep changes and it removes the background. Then I can move this around and in this case, I'm gonna drop it there. Now, I will need to recognize that this is going to be layered below the next image that I put on. So one thing I'll need to do is use my right click and eventually say bring to front. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, I need an image, a high quality image. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to insert, pictures, stock images, Type in Chicago because that's one of the images I used. It's this one here and click on insert. Beautiful, there we go. Now I can go ahead and go back here. Once it's in the corner, I can go to picture format and I'm going to click on size because what I want to do is resize this to the size of the slide. I know that the height is going to be nine inches and the width roughly 16 because we have a 16 by nine, 16 being width, height being nine. I'm gonna unlock the aspect ratio, type in nine and then 16. Once you have that, I can zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna drag it back and it'll keep the dimensions accurate and it's going to fit nice and snug in there. Okay, I can now add a new slide here if I would like and choose another image. But just for the purposes of expediting this, I'm going to use the same images that I have here, which I found on pexels.com. Okay, so I'm going to need this second image, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna hit Control V and I'm gonna drag it over now you'll notice that this is going to cover the dog which is why i said that you might need to now bring the dog up so i'm going to go to bring to front all i did was right click on that and i'm going to say bring to front and now the dog will be in front of that image which is important because if you don't then the image will slide over the dog during the transition and not look correct okay so again the one-to-one -one principle so once I have that set up, I might want to add some text because um, I might want to copy and paste the text really quickly as well. Because when I first set up the text, if I go to insert and let's say that I want to use some word art, let's say that I want to use, you know, maybe this one, it's going to be orange here as you can see. And what I'm going to do is just type in Saluki just to change it up a little bit. and drag it up to where I might want it. I'm gonna to go to text fill and I'm gonna change that to maybe some kind of the red and then I want the outline to be white but I want the outline to maybe have a lot more weight to it and there we go. So that gives me the size that I want there. Now on the next image, I might want that to be bigger like I've done there. I will show you how to do that in a second. So let's go back down here and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this actually because uh, what I'm gonna do is just use this one for the purposes of making life easy. I'm gonna control C and control V and just get that on there. So there is that. We have the first slide set up nice and neat. And now what I can do is I can hit control A while I'm on the slide and it's going to select everything or I can just drag over that and it'll select everything, whichever you prefer. I can then right click for a copy or I can hit control C or command C if you're using a Mac and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and hit control V and now we have those images there. Now of course what I said is the principle here is now this one needs to be half off with this one fully on. So what I can do here is I can drag this over until it aligns with the guidelines and there we have it. It snaps into place. Let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe you can see that a little better. It's going to snap into place for me. And I can actually use the picture format. I can go to align. And if I want to make sure that it's 100% aligned, I can use these keys. But I'm not going to do that today. Now I'm going to slide this over and place it 100% on there. Now I need the next image, which is this one here. I'm going to go ahead and click control C there. I'm gonna zoom back out, come down here. Control V and there we have it. Okay. 
Now what I might want to do on this slide is to drag this one down here, give it a little tilt, maybe make it a little larger. Let's go ahead and go to home here, make it larger, draw that out here, and boom, there we go. I'm going to hit Control A, Control C, come down here, create a new slide, plop those in. Now I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to delete them. Slide this one, oops. Slide this one over half off. This one fully on. You can see that we need to send this backwards. So I'm going to right click, send it back until we get what we want there, which does make me realize that this one is probably off. So I want to, again, right click. There we go, nice and aligned there. And again, make sure that it's all aligned correctly. And down here, there we have it. And then obviously I want the effect to be maybe something little more like this. Let's make this one maybe like that this time just to show you. And then finally, so what we've done here is we've obtained the photos, we've placed the images following this principle. I used copy and paste to make it quickly. And now all I need to do is add morph transitions. So I'm going to click on this slide. I'm going to hold down shift and click here. I'm going to choose all of those. I'm going to go to animation or transitions, excuse me. I'm going to click on morph. And there you have it. Now I can test this out. I'm gonna go to presentation. Okay, so now we can run through the slides. Looks correct to me. Beautiful, hit the escape key. All right, now as I said, if for some reason you had left an element off and already applied the morph, and then you add something, it is quite fine. And I'm gonna just type in SIUC, Southern Illinois University Carbondale. I'm gonna have it centered on this slide. I'm gonna have it floating up here on this slide just to show you that in fact it works. So I'm gonna to go to present slideshow, just my screen recording down here, click the space bar, and you can see the text moves with the morph. All right, so that's it. It's super easy to create this effect, right? I mean, there's no reason that you shouldn't be creating it in PowerPoint so that you can be wowing your audiences with just beautiful slide design. I will be leaving a link in the description to the instructions and this sample on my website so that you can download it, have it for the future in case you forget a few steps, no reason to rewatch the video. But if you did find this video useful, I don't know, maybe hit that like button so I know that. I will produce more videos just like this in the future. Follow me on YouTube, LinkedIn, or wherever else I might be online. And until I see you or hear from you, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care.